Now may the Lord open your eyes and give the amen you understanding concerning the kingdom and that you may go forth in the strength and in the power of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is Tuesday night. This is Bible study. Praise God. And I'm so glad, amen, to be back uh, with you all. Amen. We give God glory and praise for what he's done. Our scripture reading will come from a couple of places tonight. Amen. Out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 7 initially. Amen. Then we'll go to uh, 1 Corinthians 14. Amen. Uh, verse 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 through 5. Praise God. And then we got several other places that we're going to go, but we'll read that too for right now. Amen. We'll read that too for right now. We're going into a period of fasting and a prayer that we are preparing you for um, this month. Um, in the next three Bible studies to get your mind and your, uh, your, emo your mental and your spiritual lined up, amen, so that we can go into the fast with clarity, with insight, uh, with revelation knowledge as to what the Lord requires of us. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and that we're reading in the New King James Version of the Bible, verses 4 through 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 through 7. And it says, there are diversities of gifts. There are different types of gifts, but the same spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. Jesus is over all of them. Amen. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to each, each one for the profit of all. That's the part I want to home in on tonight in verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 14, verse 1 through 5, that too, amen, in the New King James Version. And it says this, pursue love, desire spiritual gift, but especially that you prophesy, especially that you prophesy. Amen. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands him. However, he who speaks, he speaks mysteries. Verse 3. But he who, he who prophesies speaks edification, amen, and exhortation and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself, but he who, amen, prophesies edifies the church. I wish that all spoke, in, spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesy. For he who prophesies greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church might receive edification. Glory to God, that the church might receive edification. Let me add 2 Corinthians, amen, chapter 10 in there, since we're already in that mindset. Verse 7 through 11, let me go ahead and add that now. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7 through 11, and it says, amen, do you look at things according to the hour's appearance? Amen, that's the question. If anyone is convinced in himself that he is Christ, let him again consider himself this in himself, that just as he is Christ, even so we are Christ. For even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord has given us for edification and not for destruction. Amen. I shall not be ashamed. Least, least, some, least I seem to terrify you by letter, for his letters, they say, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such a person consider this, that what we are in word and letter, when we are absent, such we will also be indeed when we are present. Glory to God. I want you to home your attention, amen, uh, back up, praise God, in verse 8. Amen, back, back up in verse 8. But even if I should boast somewhat more about our authority, which the Lord gave us for edification, that's it, and not for destruction. Amen. Tonight, and I'm going uh, to just start uh, teaching in regard to the power of edification, the power of edification. I think the first thing that I would say is that when we are in fasting and prayer, 
amen, it must be done with building up others in mind. Amen. I'm going to say again, it must be done while we're fasting in prayer with others in mind. Amen. In a time of consecration um, that we have say, separated to be in the presence of God in, the, in fastings and in seeking God, amen, the automatic response that should be out of that is that I become a better person. I become a better believer. I walk in a better level of holiness, amen, in a stronger level of discernment as an automatically, I believe that, amen, everyone connected around me, whatever capacity, will become better because, amen, I've given myself to God. Amen. That's the key. That's what we want to start talking about. Amen. And as, as I am built up in the Lord, praise God, my thoughts should be that everyone around me would receive, praise God, that level, um, uh, will receive the benefit from that building up in the name of Jesus. So in other words, what am I saying? Is that uh, all prayer and fasting, amen, must have someone else in mind as well, not just us, not just not just a selfish, not just, amen, me thinking about me, and, amen, but also that I be a, I'm a better father. Also that I come out of that with, a, amen, being a better husband, being a better leader, spiritual leader, because all of that encompasses who I am in the presence of God. All of that encompasses who I am in the presence of God. The book of Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1 said, Therefore, be imitators of God. As dear children, walk in love as Christ has also loved us and given himself for us as an offering. Glory to God, a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and aroma. I want to read that again. Amen. Therefore, be imitators of God as children. Glory to God as dear children and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, given himself for us, and offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smell and aroma. Amen. Christ, because of the love in him, gave himself to God for us. This is the key point that I'm talking about, amen, on tonight, is that we, amen, we must ask God in our time of prayer and fasting to increase our love level, first towards God, then towards his people. Love the Lord. Amen. Love his people. My sacrifice, will, amen, it has to entail somebody, amen, else. Has to entail, amen, encompass. Ah, that's what I'm saying. It has to encompass, glory to God, others. Not just my selfishness, not just what I'm going through, not just where I'm, amen, uh, struggling, but that I might, amen, become a type of Christ in the life of others. Thank you, Father. In Ephesians 5 and 25, on down in that same chapter, it says this, Husband, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and blameless. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies, for he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones. Glory to God. Amen. And so, uh, verse 33 says, Nevertheless, let each one of you particularly so love his wife as his own self. Amen. Let the wife see that she respects her husband. Amen. But the, 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 the point that I'm trying to make is that, amen, the love as Christ has demonstrated in before us, the church, amen, the same charge is given uh, I'm using this as an example, as the husband and the wife. He gave himself up for us. And he says to husband, give yourself to him 
for her. Give yourself up for to, to her, to him, for her. And the motivating factor, the motivating factor is the love of God. Amen. The love of God. The motivating factor, amen, the bottom line is for one thing only, amen, is because of the love of God that has swelled in me. Glory to God. The love of God that has swelled in me. Amen. Love will cause you to sacrifice and do it joyfully. Love will cause you us to sacrifice and, amen, do it in a joyful way. I want to say again, love will cause us to do it in a joyful way. In the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 14 through 18, and uh, this is what he says. Do all things without complaining, disputing, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as light in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain nor labored in vain. Look at this. Yes, and if I'm being poured out as a drink offering, amen, unto the sacrifice and the service of your faith, I am glad and rejoice with you all. For the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. Paul says, amen, my sacrifice, my giving of myself to Christ on your behalf, amen, he called it a drink offering, amen, uh, that's to be poured out, glory to God, amen, it's the Old, Cust- Old Testament concept of a drink offering, and that's to be poured out, he says, I'm pouring out my life, glory to God, on the service of your faith, I'm serving you, and I'm glad, and I rejoice with you all, for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. Amen. When the love of God swells, when the, amen, when you come to this optimum place of spiritual maturity, that's it, this optimum, this ultimate place of spiritual maturity, you can sacrifice, amen, and be poured out as a drink offering, be poured out, be waste given, spending all. Why? for somebody else to be built up, amen, someone else to be, amen, uh, to live in Christ. My dying has caused you life. Glory to God, and I'm glad, I'm glad. As long as we're, as long as when we think about service, we, amen, we come to times of being bitter, being angry, feeling like we got ran over, feeling like, amen, what we doing this for nothing, feeling like I didn't get the right compliment, I didn't get the right hand clap, Amen. At that point, we recognize, and this is what the Lord said to me, you have not matured in my love. Because my love, amen, before we were, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. And even now, all that we say that we're going to do, then not do, God God yet still keeps loving us. The love of God still keeps manifesting in our life for one reason only, amen, that God has loved us before the foundation of the earth, amen. And so uh, this is where we're pressing tonight, amen. For others, there's a power in edification, amen, and but it's motivating factor for others to be built up with the, amen, what I have been given is the love of God, amen. Jesus wanted to know in his post extension ministry to Peter, amen, is do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Amen. And he says, if you love me, it need, it should be manifested. It should be demonstrated in how you treat my lamb and how you treat my sheep. Glory to God. It should be seen, that love. So the ultimate, the maximum, of the expression of godly love is when you give yourself for somebody else's building up. Amen. Their life is the better because you've given yourself, amen, to God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, chapter 2, verse 4 through 12, which one of my favorite books for devotion, amen, is the book of 
Thessalonians, both, both of them. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 4 through 17, 13, 12, I'm sorry, in the New King James Version say this, says it like this. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our heart. Verse 5, for neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor cloak for covenants. Amen. That word cloak for covenants means pretending to be your friend to get your money. We're covering it up, amen, with this cloak, but really we just want your stuff. Amen. God is our witness. Look, look at now verse 6. Not, nor do we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, glory, just as a nursing mother cherished her own children, so affectionately longing for you. We were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, that's, part, that's it, amen, but also our lives, because you have become dear to us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring day and night that we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach the gospel uh, to you, amen, the gospel. We preach to you the gospel of God. You are, you are witnesses. God also, how devoutly, how justly, how blamelessly we behaved, amen, ourselves among you who believe as you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged everyone as a father does his own children, that you would walk worthy of God, amen, who calls you into his, whole, his own kingdom and glory, amen. When you look at verse 10, amen, he began to list things that would be a problem, amen. And so they walked devoutly and justly and blamelessly, and they behaved, amen, themselves uh, before the people of God, amen, so that there would not be anything that would cause them to be distracted, amen, or to be thrown off from the assignment that was at hand, amen, and that is their growth, and that is that they would, amen, uh, continue to go forth in the Lord, amen. He says we were like a nursing mother, we taught you as a father. And this is the kind of affection that comes out of mature love. This is the kind of affection and service, I should say that, that comes out of a saint with, whose love has matured to the place, glory to God, that you are well pleased to, amen, not only the gospel, but your life. What do you mean by life? Some may know the gospel, but they may not know how to tie their shoes. They know the gospel, but they may not know how to keep a house or how to cook for their husband. They, you know the gospel, but amen, there's so much more that I have to teach. So I can't just wait for you to some, come Sunday to teach. Amen. There is the life we must be able to give our life so that they may know life in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. So amen, when we come before God in fasting, in prayer, and we give ourselves unto the Lord, glory to God, are the Christ-like thing to do as we are fasting in prayer is that we come before God, amen. I'm, 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 I'm purposed to devote myself to God, not just so that I can be super apostle or super Christian or, amen, be big in other people's eyes, but that I may render service to those that are the closest to me first. Amen. When I fast, I ought to progressively become a better husband. When I fast, I ought to progressively during the fast, amen, change and become a better father, a better leader, amen, and all of those things that come along with who I am in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. And so I, I, I have to press in holiness because if not, the things that, amen, I don't do right can become a distraction. Praise God. And so I've got to learn to follow the Holy Spirit. 1 Peter 5 and 1. 1 Peter 5 and 1 in the New King James Version. And this is what it says. Amen. The elders who are among you, I exhort. I am a fellow 
elder and witness of the suffering of Christ and also a partaker of the glory that has been revealed. This is this exhortation. Shepherd the flock of God, which is among you, serving as overseers. Glory to God. And he says, not by compulsion, but willingly, not for dishonest gain, but eagerly, not as Lord over those entrusted to you, but, but being an example to the flock. Amen. And when the chief shepherd appear, you will receive the crown of glory that does not fade away. I thought it was good to look at this same portion of scripture in the New Living Translation because it said it so much clearer that I thought it'd be good to share with you. It says, and now a word to you who are elders in the church. I too am an elder and I a witness of the suffering of Christ. And I too will serve, will share, amen, in this glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. When he is revealed to the whole world, amen, as a fellow elder, I appeal to you. This is Peter. As a fellow elder, I appeal to you. As a fellow elder, I make this appeal to you. Amen. Care for the flock of flock that God has entrusted to you. Watch over it willingly not grudgingly. Thank you, Father. For, not for what we can get out of it. That's it. Not for what we can get out of it, but because you are eager to serve God. Amen. That's what I want to get at. Not for what we can get out of it, but because you're eager to serve God. Amen. When you're eager to get something out of Amen. Being a better husband. When you're eager to get something out of it from uh, monetary of being a better pastor, if the response is not what you think you should have. Amen. If you don't get the right kind of thank you, if you don't get the right, what your anticipated response in gratitude, then we're the most miserable and we're upset and we're broken. But if, if it is because I eagerly want to serve God, amen, because I'm eager to serve God. And what I'm doing, I'm do amen, I've done unto the Lord. What I'm doing, I've done unto the Lord. Just in case, just in case, amen, that she doesn't say thank you the way I think she should say thank you or recognize the level of sacrifice in the way that I think she ought to recognize what I'm doing or say anything. Glory to God. And then just in case, praise God, amen, regardless of that, I, what I do, I do it unto the, unto the Lord, amen. And even in the midst of, amen, of disagreements or whatever, I still serve God. And when I serve God, I serve those that are around me with readiness, with eagerness to be poured out as a drink offering for their edification, for their building. What God has given to me is for somebody else, the spiritual gift. God gave to you, beloved, is for the profit of others. The spiritual gift that's given to you for the benefit, for the building, for the edifying of others, it has been given to you, but it wasn't for you. It's given to you, but it's for the use of the body of Christ and for those that are around you. Glory to God. Far be it from us, far be it from us, is that we are, we are, we are that selfish to where we fast and pray and it's only because, amen, what we want and our things. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Far be it from us that we should be that kind of person. Praise the name of the Lord. So my, my, my primary point and my exhortation to you tonight about edification and this power is that, amen, when we go before, when we draw near to God, amen, with a, a, with a full assurance, we draw near to him because we're going to be better we're going to be more sanctified, more focused uh, for somebody else's deliverance. Glory to God. There are some people, amen, I spend the majority of my time, amen, praying not for just myself. I pray and fast, amen, and uh, sacrifice, being poured out as a drink offering, amen, on the service of somebody else. Glory to God for the service of God and the motivating factor for all of this service is the same motivation 
that God sent his only begotten son into work to the world. God so loved. Christ gave himself for us, amen, because of the love that was in him. And we should mimic. We should be imitators of God. We should mimic Christ. Glory to God. And that beloved, so somebody else could have a life worth living. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, one more scripture, then I'm done. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. And I'm going to read all of this in the New Living tra Translation. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. And this is what it says. When I left Macedonia, I urge you to stay there in Ephesus and stop those who teaching is contrary to the truth. Amen. Do not let them waste their time with in endless discussions of myth, spiritual pedigrees, and things only that lead, uh, that lead to meaningless speculation, which, amen, do not help people live a life of faith in God. That's it, beloved. Wash ourselves. And this is not the main point but I just wanted to bring that part out. We have to be careful that the enemy don't rob your time, amen, with meaningless foolishness that don't help people live a life of faith in God. Amen. Don't waste your time. Do not waste your time with them flesh-filled, pride, amen, filled arguments. Amen. Anyway, verse 5, the purpose of my instructions is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a, from a pure heart and a clear conscience and genuine faith. <laughs> Glory to God. The purpose of my instructions, I'm talking to you, to you tonight, is that all believers will be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and a genuine faith. Hallelujah. The purpose of my instruction tonight is that all believers would be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. Verse 6, but some people have missed this whole point. Amen. They have turned away from things, uh, from these things to spend their time with meaningless discussion. Amen. They want to be known as teachers of the law, but they do not know what they're teaching them, what they're talking about, even though they speak so confidently. They don't know what they're talking about. Amen. And so my exhortation uh, tonight is in this pursuit of helping others. Amen. This pursuit of fasting and prayer, let us keep our mind on edifying of helping someone else. Amen. Even the spiritual gift of prophecy. Amen. We prophesy is to build up someone else. One of the purposes of prophecy is for edification. Amen. Edification is for, amen, edifying, for building up, not for destruction. I don't care how uh, the saints may have turned to sin, away from a true and living God, amen, we are not to tear them down. That's not the, that's not the goal, is to tear them down. Glory to God in the highest is to build them up. Praise God. Amen. And, 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 and so I just encourage you tonight, I exhort you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is that when we start this time of fasting and prayer, amen, I pray, start praying now that God will build you up, amen, in his love. And as you go on fasting and prayer, continue to pray, amen, that, that his love would be made known in you, that it would manifest so that you would be Christ-like, amen, that you would be Christ-like, amen. The ultimate goal of Christ's coming is die to die on the cross. The ultimate goal in his demonstrating his love was to die, to be raised again, amen, to make perpetual intercession for the saint. His ultimate goal was the sacrifice of the cross was for us, amen. And you, you and I, beloved, we need to walk with that same mind. Amen. Keeping our eye on him. He's the ultimate example of sacrifice for others. Amen. In the book of Philippians, again, Paul says, amen, I, if I'm being poured out as a drink offering on the sacrifice in the service of your faith, he says, I'm glad and I rejoice with you all for the same reason you also be glad and rejoice with me. 
Glory to God. Let's, amen. If you're serving, rejoice. Be glad about serving God. Amen. Be glad about being a service to someone else. Praise God. And your reward is in his hands. Thank you, Father. Your reward, amen, is in his hands. Not from the people smile. They may not smile. They may not know to the extent of who you are and what you've done in their life to the degree that you serve them until after you're gone, until after you've gone, and then they grow into what you've done. But, but if you keep your eye on them, waiting for the proper hand clap, you'll die bitter. Glory to God, you'll die bitter and angry. Keep your eye on the prize. Amen. His name is Jesus, and he's the Christ. He's the son of the living God, and he's given us this ultimate example. He has given us the example to follow. And so let us walk in his steps. Let us walk in that. Praise God. There's power in this edification. Amen. I'm going to give myself to God and automatically ought to be a better, amen, husband. Automatically, my wife ought to sense it. My children ought to sense it. Amen. Because I've drawn near to God. I've drawn near to God. And those near to me ought to be the ones that are being recipients of that. I don't have to travel across seas for that to happen. I don't have to go to Canada for it to happen. I don't have to go, amen, to Jamaica and, and Africa to demonstrate the love of God. Amen. My first, my first responsibility, amen, is to demonstrate that love, amen, uh, in our own homes with our own people. Amen. And as they said in the scripture in the book of Ephesians, praise the name of the Lord that the husband ought to give himself up, amen, for her. Amen, that he may present to himself a glorious church. Amen, without spot or wrinkle, without, amen, holy and without blemish. Amen, so the husband ought to, amen, love his own wife as Christ loved the church. Amen, gave himself up for her. This time, let it be about somebody else and not just about you and where you're struggling in holiness. Amen, let it be about somebody else. This time, let the fast be about somebody else. Amen. Fast and pray for somebody's deliverance, somebody's healing. Fast and pray with, amen, with great concern for the quality of spiritual life your brothers and sisters are living. Praise the name of the Lord. I bless you tonight. I thank God for you all. May you walk high in high places in the Lord. May you see yourself as he sees you. May you walk with complete rule and dominion in the earth realm and manifest the kingdom of God. Father, I thank you for the hearer. I thank you for those that are here and now, those that would hear later on in the recording. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would hear when we hear this word that we just don't hear, but we will become doers. And our life will be a burnt offering. Our life will be a pour. We will pour out as a drink offering on the service of someone else, motivated by your love only. And we bless you and we thank you. We magnify you. God, we extol you, extol you and give you praise. You are longer worthy. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.